Hello, welcome back. So in this uh, video, we're gonna use the scatter brush tool in order to paint uh, this environment with, uh, in order to populate it with trees and rocks. So I already have the plugin initialized and I'm gonna use a pack called Medieval Environment by Manufacturer K4. And I'm gonna drag and drop these, this folder inside the Prefab Library Manager window. I'm using a demo scene, which is included with the pack. So now click on the uh, scatter brush uh, button right here. When we do that, notice that we get this uh, green circle in the scene that is hovering the terrain. Um, this is going, going to be our brush. If I hold down the control key and use the mouse scroll wheel, I can change the radius of the brush or I can just use the uh, brush radius field here in the inspector. Okay, now we have a, um, at the top we have a scatter brush profile field. So uh, in order to start painting, we need to have a prefab profile set up. Uh, I'm going to go to Tools, G-Spawn, Windows and click on Scatter Brush Prefabs. And I'm going to drag and drop it right over here. Okay, now I'm going to create a new profile and I'm going to call it uh, Trees, Rocks, Create. Okay, now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to populate this profile with a bunch of trees. So uh, let's select a bunch of these guys. I'm going to drag and drop them right here in the uh, in the left pane, I'm gonna decrease the prefab preview size to make sure we have enough room. And then make sure you select the uh, trees and rocks profile here. And now if I uh, left click and drag the mouse, notice that we can paint these uh, trees. I'm gonna undo. And notice that when we paint, um, there's not too much density to be had here and it looks a little bit unrealistic. So let's go ahead and um, talk about some of these settings that we have here. So notice that when I click on each of these prefabs, there's this, there's this volume radius field here that changes. And uh, this volume radius is basically, um, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's uh, kind of like, a, a, it, it controls the size of the objects. And the bigger the size, the more spread out the objects will be. Now. Uh, you have here two buttons called use prefab radius and use flat prefab radius. So the flat prefab radius is uh, the one that the plugin will use by default. It's basically uh, the radius of a cylinder that approximates the object volume. And pre the prefab radius is the radius of a sphere that approximates the um, prefab radius. Now, uh, for trees especially, um, these values are a little, bit, a little bit too big. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select one of the trees and press Ctrl A to select all of them. And then I'm gonna set the volume radius to something like 1.3. 1. Uh, 1 now if I left click and drag, notice that we get a lot more density, which looks uh, much, much better. But still, I think they're a little bit too close to each other, so maybe 1.7. And yeah, there you go. Okay. Now let's uh, also add a bunch of rocks. So if I, go, if I click on the uh, rock prefab library here, uh, I'm gonna get this guy and these guys too. So let's go ahead. Now, uh, one thing to remember is when you, uh, when you, add, when you keep adding prefabs uh, to the prefab profile, you might wanna increase the uh, radius of the circle a little bit because otherwise the plugin will not have a chance, especially if the objects have a large volume like some of these prefabs do, uh, it will not get a chance to spawn all of them. So you, you know, when you drag the mouse, some of them will be missed sometimes. Um, now let's uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see how uh, how this looks like. So, yeah, that, that looks uh, looks about right. Now, there's quite there's quite a lot of these small rocks, which uh, personally I don't like. So I'm gonna select these two guys and I'm gonna set the spawn chance to 0 0.2. Okay, that looks uh, looks much better. There we go. Okay. Now, um, one thing I want to do is I want to increase the volume radius for the big guy over here. I'm going to set it to, let's say, uh, maybe 10. Yeah. So the bigger the radius, notice that the bigger the space between uh, the rock and the trees. So you can, uh, this, this volume radius can actually be used as a, a repel mechanism for some of the, some of the prefabs like the rock that we have here. Uh, okay, now notice that when I move the mouse uh, over the trees, the circle will 
will quickly change rotation. Uh, now the reason why this happens is because the plugin will by default treat every object in the scene as a, as a potential surface, as a potential paint surface. So what you want to do when you, when you paint objects on a terrain is you want to go to surface types. Currently notice that it's set to everything, just set it to nothing and then click on terrains. Yeah, so from now on only the only terrains are going to be recognized as a paint as a paint surface. Uh, you can do the same with uh, surface layers. So you have here this surface layers thing, uh, this uh, surface layers field. Uh, currently, again, it's set to everything. But if you have a specific layer that you don't want to be used as a paint surface, then you can just uncheck it from uh, from this uh, from this list. Okay. Now let's uh, talk about some of these uh, some of these uh, fields that we have here. We have. Um, for example, randomized rotation, which is uh, something that you usually want to have checked. It will randomize the rotation of the prefabs. And uh, this, you have here a field called randomization axis, which is currently set to surface normal. So this is what we want in this case, because we want the rotation of the trees and the rocks to be randomized along the terrain up axis. Okay, and then you have the minimum and the maximum rotation, which are currently set to 0 and 360, which is uh, what we want. And also random or scale randomization, um, because you want to have like some of the trees, you want to have them smaller, some of them you want to have them bigger. Uh, currently it's set to 0 0.8 and 1. Uh, we could probably set this to 0, 1 point, uh, 1.2 maybe. Uh, yeah, so you will need you will need to play around with these settings to find something that uh, that looks um, that looks okay to you. You have here a field called offset from surface. Uh, setting this to a positive value doesn't really make too much sense. Uh, mostly, the reason why this is here is um, it allows you to set it to a negative value in case you find that some of the objects float above the terrain. Now, this embedding surface. Uh, field here can um, help with uh, with this uh, with this uh, issue. Yeah, so if you have this checked, um, the plugin will try to make sure that the objects are not floating. But with more uh, irregular objects, with objects that have more irregular surfaces, this it, this is not always a guarantee. So in this in this particular case, you might want to use a negative offset for for this field right here. Then you also have a line axis and alignment axis. Um, for trees and rocks, you, you don't really want to use a line axis because, uh, for example, trees usually grow upwards and rocks usually are modeled in such a way that you don't you don't want to align them to the terrain. So we're going to leave these unchecked for now. Now, one of the things I would like to talk about is the enable slope check field that we have here. So imagine that, for example, uh, we don't want to have, we don't want to place, currently if I, if I paint, notice that the trees will be painted on these cliffs. So let's just assume that we didn't want to paint uh, trees on, on the cliffs over here. What we can do is we can select our tree prefabs and check the enable slope check uh, field. And then uh, here you have two fields, the minimum slope and the maximum slope. We're going to leave the minimum slope to zero in this case. And we're going to set the uh, maximum slope to like 10. And now if I, uh, if I try to paint, in this area, notice that only the rocks will be painted. The trees are no longer uh, placed on, on those hills. Yeah, something like this. Okay, so uh, let's, let's just uh, play around with a little bit with, uh, with these guys. I still think that these guys have are too, they get spawned a little bit too often uh, because they're quite small and probably that's why. Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay, so uh, you can um, so in conjunction with uh, with this uh, with this tool, what you can also use is you can use the object erase functionality. You have here three erase brushes. I'm going to use the three D erase brush in this particular case, and I'm going to increase the radius a little bit, and you can kind of you know carve a path through these uh, through these guys if. You know, if you this is what you want to do again, let's set the surface types to nothing and terrain. Yeah. Okay. Let's set it to a smaller value. Okay, so you can kind of, you know, edit this out the way you want it. Um, yeah. So that's uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, we could also use the uh, physics spawn tool if we wanted to, for example, um, 
place a bunch of let's say barrels and rocks here let's let's go ahead and do that uh, window tools uh, G spawn windows and click on random prefabs uh, let's go ahead and add some barrels a box and what else maybe uh, a cart remember we have a cart here a wagon actually so two types of wagons okay so now uh, I already have the render prefab profile activated the default one um, I'm gonna increase the I'm gonna hold down control and use the mouse scroll wheel to increase the drop radius and hold down shift and the mouse scroll wheel to increase the drop height and I can just populate this area with you know different kinds of props maybe there was a bandit raid of sorts you know and they kind of trashed everything here and this path could lead to a village and 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 so on all right yeah so uh that's that's all i wanted to cover in this video thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time bye